welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on the development of the heart, and we're going to look at how the atria develop and how they separate. First, let's look at some of the structures in the atria so we can see what parts need to develop, and then we'll go back and see how that happens. There are two atria, the right and the left. The right atrium has a smooth posterior wall and a rough anterior wall. The roughness is because it has musculi pectinati, which are muscular ridges, as does the right auricle, which is the little ear-shaped projection from the right atrium. The junction between the two parts is marked by a ridge on the inside that's called the crista terminalis. This creates a groove on the external surface called the sulcus terminalis. It has openings for the superior vena cava, which brings blood from the upper parts of the body, the inferior vena cava, which brings blood from the lower parts of the body, and the coronary sinus, which drains venous blood from the heart itself. They open on the smooth posterior wall. The openings of the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus have valves. The right atrium is separated from the left by a septum. This interatrial septum has an oval depression called the fossa ovalis with a raised rim called the limbus of the fossa ovalis, also called the annulus ovalis. The left atrium also has a rough and a smooth part. The rough anterior wall is marked with musculi pectinati. The smooth posterior wall has the openings of the four pulmonary veins. Between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve, and on the left side of the heart is the mitral valve. These are the atrioventricular valves. Now we go back to the heart tube. The heart develops from the heart tube. The heart tube has dilations. We have the sinus venosus, then the primitive atrium, the primitive ventricle, the bulbus cordis, and the truncus arteriosus. The heart loops such that the atria come to lie behind, along with the sinus venosus. And in this video, we're going to be using this part of the heart tube. The primitive atrium communicates with the primitive ventricle through an atrioventricular canal. When the heart loops, the atria come to lie behind the ventricles. Between the atria and the ventricles is the atrioventricular canal. As of now, there's no distinction between right and left. But that canal separates. If we look at the atrioventricular canal, think of it this way, you're in the atrium looking into the ventricle. There are swellings called cushions that develop from the superior and inferior margins. There are lateral swellings as well. These are called endocardial cushions. The superior and inferior cushions fuse. So now there are two separate pathways into the ventricles. If you look at it this way, think of this as the developing atria and this as the developing ventricles. Here are the fused endocardial cushions separating the atrioventricular canal. This is called the septum intermedium. Local proliferation of mesenchymal tissue around each atrioventricular orifice forms the valves, the tricuspid valve on the right and the bicuspid mitral valve on the left. Now this is a common atrium and that has to split into right and left atria. That's by the formation of an interatrial septum. There's growth of tissue from the roof of the atrium. It grows towards those fused endocardial cushions. This is called the septum primum. Primum because it's the first septum. As it grows, there's a space between the lower end of the septum and the cushions. This is called the foramen primum because it's an opening. Before it can close completely, there are perforations that form in the upper part of the septum primum from apoptosis. They fuse and form a second opening. Second, so it's the foramen secundum. The foramen primum is no longer there. Another growth forms from the roof of the atrium. This is called the septum secundum. Now this doesn't grow as much as septum primum. It extends towards the atrioventricular canal and it overlaps the foramen secundum. So now there's an oblique passage between the right atrium and the left. This is called the foramen ovale. The septum primum becomes the valve of the foramen ovale. This is one of the shunts that remains in fetal circulation. 
blood from the right atrium gets shunted to the left atrium. After birth, when the left atrial pressure becomes higher than the right, the valve, that's the septum primum, moves back and closes the foramen ovale. What remains is an oval depression formed by the septum primum, and that's called the fossa ovalis. The septum secundum forms the elevated ridge around it, that's called the limbus of the fossa ovalis. But all of that is after birth. For now, there's a passage between the two atria. So now we've successfully formed an interatrial septum. The right atrium has a rough part and a smooth part. The rough part develops from the primitive atrium, but the smooth posterior wall, that comes from the sinus venosus. The sinus venosus drains into the atrium. The body of the sinus venosus has two horns. It has a right horn and a left horn and each horn receives blood from three veins. The vital line veins bring blood from the umbilical vesicle. The umbilical veins bring blood from the placenta. The common cardinal veins, which are formed by the anterior and posterior cardinal veins, they bring blood from the body. Two sets, one on the right, one on the left. So we have the cardinal veins, the umbilical veins, and the vital line veins on the left and on the right. The ones on the left, they regress. At least the portion that's close to the heart regresses. On the right, the umbilical vein regresses. The right vital line vein forms a part of the inferior vena cava, and the right common cardinal vein forms a part of the superior vena cava. So you can sort of see a pattern emerging here. If not, it's okay. It should make more sense soon. The right horn enlarges while the left horn remains as the coronary sinus and the oblique vein of the left atrium. If I were to rewrite it now, the oblique vein of the left atrium leads into the coronary sinus, and these are from the left horn of the sinus venosus. It drains into the enlarging right horn of the sinus venosus, which receives the superior and inferior vena cava. Now if we put that on the back of a heart that's completely developed, we have the oblique vein of the left atrium, the coronary sinus, the right atrium, with the superior and inferior vena cava draining into it. The smooth posterior wall of the right atrium is formed by the absorption of the right horn of the sinus venosus. The left horn remains as the coronary sinus and the oblique vein of the left atrium. This portion of the right atrium is called the sinus venarum, and it receives the openings of the veins. So the rough wall comes from the primitive atrium, and the smooth posterior wall is from the right horn of the sinus venosus. If we look at the inside of the right atrium, the sinus venosus opens into the right atrium through a sinoatrial orifice. This orifice has valves, a right venous valve and a left venous valve which are fused dorsocranially to form the septum spurium. Now remember that a zillion things happen at once as the embryo develops. It's not sequential, like one thing forms after another. So the interatrial septum would be in different stages of development, but ignore its presence for now. The septum spurium and the left venous valve fuse with the septum secundum, forming a part of the interatrial septum. The right horn of the sinus venosus is getting absorbed to form the posterior wall. That leaves the right venous valve. The superior part of the right venous valve disappears, and the inferior part forms the valves of the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus, which open along with the superior vena cava into the sinus venarum of the right atrium, which is the smooth part of the right atrium. And here we have the rough part of the right atrium from the primitive atrium. The junction between these two parts has that muscular ridge, the crista terminalis. So now the right atrium has developed. Similarly, the left atrium has a rough part and a smooth part. The rough part is formed from the primitive atrium, just like the right atrium. Initially, the left atrium has the opening of the stem of the pulmonary vein, which is formed by four branches. 
all the stems get absorbed into the atrial wall, leaving the openings of the four pulmonary veins. So the smooth part is formed by the absorption of the pulmonary veins. To summarize, both atria have rough and smooth parts. The rough parts of both the atria come from the primitive atrium. The smooth part of the right atrium is from the right horn of the sinus venosus, and the smooth part of the left atrium is from the absorption of pulmonary veins. And now both the atria have developed and they have separated. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, you can give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.